I was, uh, I'm a Canadian born, um, Chinese Canadian. My mother was born here in Canada, but was, grew up uh, from about age 10 to, sh to adult in China and then moved back here in her late 20s. Uh, my father was born in China, and uh, after he and my mother had a number of children, she, they returned here. He returned, uh, my mother brought him back uh, with my brother and my sister. Uh, and he would have been about in his 40s at the time. Okay, and then I was born here, once they were reunited here. So I'm sort of one and a half generation Canadian, um, born. Um, and then I grew up in East Vancouver and uh, graduated, went to UBC, and then um, got a job out in Maple Ridge. And uh, when I married, we moved out here to Coquitlam with my husband. And uh, here we are. I've re worked in Surrey as an administrator and then retired uh, about nine years ago. Yeah, that was a while ago. <laughs> and uh, so here I am. Yeah. It's interesting. I've thought a lot about growing up as a Chinese um, person with a Chinese culture and definitely looking Chinese. And I remember that I always had this feeling of wanting to fit in and never feeling that I really did fit in because I looked so different. I think I was fortunate growing up in East Vancouver though because in East Vancouver there were such a there was such a diverse uh, culture there you know between the Asians that were predominantly Chinese at the time there weren't very many other cultures but there was some Japanese um, not too many Koreans and a few Vietnamese maybe but it was mainly Chinese then you had the Japanese um, students as well and uh, but mostly European um, descent families so but there was a little bit more acceptance I think in mm -hmm. East Vancouver of Asians and Chinese in particular but that didn't take it away that there was always the racial slurs that were used and comments being directed at people who were um, Chinese just because I looked Chinese. And I remember growing up always wanting to fit in and feeling that I never did fit in. Um, I always wanted to dress like everybody else. I always wanted to eat the food like everybody else. Um, I remember quite often my mom, my dad used to make our lunches for us and sometimes it would be a thermos full of, of rice and um, you know s things to go with the rice which is what I ate at home every day and quite normal but I remember getting comments like what are you eating like that that's weird looking and that kind of because I didn't have a sandwich like everybody else did. So, you know, quite often I would ask for a bologna sandwich so that I could fit in with everybody else. Um, so, you know, or, you know, eventually it evolved the thermos can contain not rice and, and, um, and things to go with the rice. It became um, beefaroni or something like that. <laughs> that. That was more acceptable, it seemed. But, uh, yeah, I, but I always remember always not feeling 100% fitting in. Um, I did, of course, gravitate to most of my friends were Chinese, although we did have a number of uh, friends in the group that weren't. But predominantly, we were Chinese or Asian-born uh, people that we just kind of gravitated towards each other. And whether it was consciously or unconsciously that we did that, it's just the way it was. Um, I remember my mom making a comment to me at one time that... Um, well, it's not just my mom, but there was a common term used when we were growing up that called us bananas. And, um, and what that meant was we, we were yellow on the outside, as in Chinese or Asian, and trying to be white on the inside. Mm -hmm. And that was a big part of what drove how I acted, what I did, who I saw, 
and I just always wanted to fit in and it never really was completely there and uh, looking back on it I regret that I tried to push my culture and my heritage back and hide it or shut it down um, as much as I did because I feel I've missed out on a lot of things my parents are now gone of course and um, there are things I'd love to wish I could have asked them when I was younger and wished I could have heard the stories uh, about them. I mean, up until five years or three years ago, I never even knew how my parents met. Um, and it was only through an aunt, her, uh, my mom's youngest sister, that we ha you know, had the opportunity to actually find out how, A, my mom even returned to China, and B, how she met my dad. So those are stories that I wished I had been able to ask when I was growing up, but when I was growing up, my focus was all, was to lose as much Chinese as I could and be more English or Canadian. And uh, to, even to the point where I used to tell my mom when we were out in public not to speak Chinese so loudly. Like she did not know English a lot. She worked in an environment that didn't require her to know a lot of English, as did my dad, so they never ever did learn how to speak English fluently uh, because it wasn't required of them. Um, I know the neighbor across the street from us, uh, across the alley in Vancouver, um, was a teacher, and she taught my mom as much English as she could, and I still have those books that my mom used and wrote and, and did it, but she didn't retain a lot, but and partially because coming over in your late 20s, 30s, um, to learn a language in any country is a challenge, and especially when it's not fully supported by people around you. So um, I think uh, that's one of the reasons why my parents never ever fully learnt English. Um, my husband's parents and many others who parents speak full English, They're, they were, they came to Canada in their teens or in, in school age, so they learned a lot of their English in school, whereas my mom didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so, you know, doing all the Chinese things, the Chinese way of going about things was one part of my life, and when I got to school, that was a whole different part of my life, and, and it was, they were sort of separated. And, uh, you know, culturally, Chinese are different, you know. I mean, there there were certain things when I grew up, you, you know, playing, girls playing sports was not a thing you did in the Chinese culture, um, at least not the kind of sports you do. You know, you don't go out and play soccer and football and knock around stuff like that. You did dancing, maybe, or just, just sort of, you know, but music and those kinds of things would be more girl type things but uh, my sister paved the way for that for me because she was the black sheep and so to speak and she did all the high school sports and I just tagged along with her and and uh, my parents just went along with it but again I, I look back at it and I see that was just my way of trying to fit in because I didn't want to be just the person who was always um, reading books or good at math, you know, that was the thing. <laughs>